Good morning. Welcome to CMC Markets on Friday, the 9th of June. And then this quick look at the week ahead, beginning the 12th of June, with me, Michael Hewson. And it's been one of those weeks that I think we've really struggled for direction. Um, markets have remained fairly resilient. I think I think we can say that. The S&P 500 trading up in and around that 4,300 area. The Nasdaq continues to look reasonably resilient. And we've also seen a, a fairly decent rebound in the Russell 2000 as well, which has up until recently significantly underperformed the wider market. So, so where does that leave us going forward? Well, I think the, thing, the, the, the two key moments this week were surprise rate hikes from the RBA and the Bank of Canada. Now, those of you who will have listened to my video last week, um, I suggested that we may get a rate hike from one or t'other of these two central banks. The fact that we got a rate hike from both suggests to me that there is still this belief that services inflation, and I think this is where, where, the, where the problem is, services inflation um, continues to remain sticky. Um, and that, I think, is the problem that's facing central banks at the moment, despite rising evidence that the world's biggest economy, China, second biggest economy rather, it's not the world's biggest economy yet, the world's second biggest economy, China, is entering deflation. Producer prices earlier today came in at minus 4.6%, uh, lowest levels since 2016. Um, and that suggests to me that this deflationary wave could be coming our way. Now, how that plays out in the wider global economy, we're already seeing in the manufacturing sector. That that continues to look very, very weak indeed. Services, on the other hand, still seems fairly resilient. Last week's payrolls numbers were very good, um, fairly decent numbers, even as the unemployment rate edged higher, which brings us neatly to this week. Um, or this coming week, because we've got a trifecta of central bank decisions later this week, starting with the Federal Reserve on Wednesday, followed by the ECB on Thursday and the Bank of Japan on Friday. Um, of all of these, we may find that the Federal Reserve is an outlier when it comes to um, interest rates. There, the, the market consensus is that we will get a hold in rates or a skip whatever you want to call it. Um, but nonetheless, what we're seeing at the moment is markets are increasingly pricing out rate cuts. That's exerting upward pressure on yields, not only here in the UK, where the two-year yield in the UK is back at 4.5% um, and back close to the highs that we saw last October, but also US two-year yields have also edged higher over the course of the past few days and are now back close to the levels that we saw earlier this year, not quite um, at the 5% levels that we saw pre-US banking sector meltdown, but certainly edging back that way. And we are we, we do appear, we do appear to have put the, the concerns about the US banking sector very much in the rear view mirror, even though that sector still remains um, quite significantly below the levels that it was at the beginning of March. But nonetheless, um, markets are coalescing um, around a potential hold. But that sort of rather begs the question, why would the Fed hold? Um, if the market is pricing a rate hike in July, which it is, and not June, why not go in June? Nothing much is going to change between now and the July meeting. There'll be one more CPI report um, and one more payrolls report. We've got a CPI report later um, in the week, the day before the Federal Reserve rate decision, and obviously that could be a key factor in whether or not the Fed goes for a hold or a hike. But we've already been guided by the likes of Jay Powell, Philip Jefferson, who's in line for the deputy um, chair of the Federal Reserve, that a hold is probably what we're going to get. But for me, the optics of that are tricky, are tricky to navigate. Because if you get a hawkish hold, it rather begs the question, well, why wait? 
if you're going to hike in July and you're worried about inflation, why not hike now? You know, and that for me, I think is the the, the real the real tightrope the Fed is is going to have to walk because we look at the jobs market, still looks strong, wages now trending at above headline CPI, which the Fed may well be concerned about. So we've seen the RBA hike, we've seen the Bank of Canada hike, we'll probably see the ECB hike. So why would the Fed remain on hold if they're going to hike in July? It just makes no sense to me whatsoever, um, which suggests to me they got their messaging wrong. So, um, you know, the bigger question is the US economy likely to be in a significantly different place between now and then. It is slowing down. There is no question, but that's the that's the cause and effect. That's what rate hikes are designed to do. They're designed to slow the economy to down, slow the economy down to kill demand. So, you know, if the US economy is slowing, that's exactly what the Fed wants. But, you know, the, the jobs numbers, the jolts back above 10, 10, 10 million. So there's still there's, the, the US labor market is still pretty tight. So, you know, it's merely a matter of timing. So we may get a whole hawkish hold. We may get a hike at the moment. I would argue it could go either way. So what are we looking for US CPI next week? Because obviously that comes on Tuesday. Um, the, the day before, and it'll be interesting to see whether or not we get a further softening of headline inflation. That's certainly what the economists are predicting, 4.9% in April down to 4.1% in the May numbers, but the important numbers are going to be core. Core CPI, we've also got core PPI as well on the Wednesday, the day after. Um, PPI has actually been where we have started to see really sharp falls in headline inflation in the US and pretty much across the board. Um, you're looking at core PPI, um, that is around about 2.9% to 3%. That's fallen quite sharply. Now, core CPI, currently at 5.5%, is expected to fall to 5.3%. So um, there is certainly significant divergence when it comes to what PPI is doing, which tends to be a much more um, forward-looking indicator for CPI than what's, what's happening in core prices. So core prices, 5.3% core, core CPI is expected on the Tuesday. Core PPI is expected to fall below 3% um, on Wednesday. And then obviously we've got the Fed rate decision. And again, the consensus is for a hold, but, you know, we we could we could well see a hike, but at the moment I think that 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 is probably uh, that would go against I think that would go against guidance. So that would be a surprise if they were to hike, and then they'd have to manage the message as to why they changed their mind. So they're in a bit of a hole of their own making. Um, so that's that's the U.S. next week. On Thursday, we've got the ECB rate decision. Um, let's have a quick look. At what the DAX is doing before I get to that. You can see the type of price action we've had this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We've done absolutely nothing all week. Traded in a range, support 15,900, 15, top of that range around about 16,000. So it's been pretty, pretty uneventful. So the ECB, there appears little doubt. We'll see another 25 basis points on Thursday. Um, I think the big question is, how many more can they do? If we look at what Euro dollar's been doing, the market is unconvinced for all the hawkish rhetoric that the ECB will be able to deliver the number of cuts, sorry, cuts, hikes that it is currently um, guiding that it may need to do. So Germany is in a technical recession. The Eurozone economy was revived. It's, 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 GDP numbers were also revised lower this week to quarterly contractions of minus 0.1%. Um, so again, the question is, even though headline inflation is coming down and the economy is in recession, will the ECB want to push its luck and continue to hike aggressively going forward? You don't hike into a recession. A recession by itself should bring prices down. The ECB has already gone quite heavily. Yes, it is lagging behind the Fed, but the reason it's lagging behind the Fed is because obviously the European economy is an, a lot less stronger than the US economy. 
So um, core prices hit a record high of 5.7% in March. They've fallen to 5.3% in the most recent numbers released earlier this month. But PPI again has been the leading indicator here. So I think it stands to reason that we may see 25 basis points from the ECB. The big question is what comes after that. And I'm not convinced we're going to see um, too many rate hikes um, after the hike that we see this coming week. Same applies for the Bank of England, which comes the week after next. Um, markets are pricing in another 100 basis points. I struggle with that, I really do. We may see 25 basis points um, at the June meeting, but will we see many more than that after that? I think inflation will come down. It may prove to be sticky, but I think there's an awful lot to say that if we get an economic slowdown in the second half of this year, prices should come down by themselves. Again, we need to keep an eye on PPI. On the topic of the UK economy, we've also got UK wages and unemployment data um, released uh, later uh, this later this week or this coming week. And again, here we've seen unemployment start to edge higher. Um, predicted is predicted to move up to 4% for the three months to April when the numbers are released on Tuesday. Um, but wages are also expected to go up from 6.7% to 6.9%. So wages are going up, unemployment is going up. So that gives the Bank of England a double dilemma when it comes to what to do with rates. But ultimately, it has an inflation target. It's been absolutely abysmal in meeting it. And the likelihood is we're probably going to see 25 basis points and probably another 25 um, later on in August as well. So I think there's certainly potential for another 50 basis points from the Bank of England. Um, I'm less convinced about uh, more aggressive rate hikes from the rest. Um, as for cable, I'm still a little, I'm still bullish, I've got to say. Um, I think we're going to retest this trend line. We're going to test this trend line from the peaks back in 2021. And uh, I certainly think there's an even chance we could probably move up to 127, 128. You could, you know, you could sort of argue, well, if the UK economy is going into recession, you know, why would you be long cable? But, you know, it's never a zero sum game when it comes to currencies. And ultimately, if the Fed is near the end of its rate hiking cycle, um, markets will start to price in when the Fed is going to cut rates, when the Fed is going to ease monetary policy, and that's likely to be negative for the dollar. So that could benefit the pound. We'll have to see. But at the moment, um, decent resistance on this trend line here. We may struggle to get much beyond that in the short term. The key support level is this area here around about 122.95, 123. So I'll probably look for any dips back to that um, when it comes to cable euro dollars pretty much same old same old it's in a range top of that range is around about 108.20 got a fairly decent range building up again here we did edge slightly higher today but again there is a big barrier around about 108 and until such times as we conclusively break above that we're likely to continue to range trade i think the big one this week is dollar yen now earlier today um number of uh, Japanese officials pushed back on the idea that the yield curve control policy um, would be tweaked at this week's meeting. It is on Friday. It's a very important meeting for Kazuka Ueda, Ueda, or however you pronounce his name. But what I would say is that Bank of Japan core inflation is at 4.1 percent. It's over the double. It's over double um, the Bank of Japan's target. And while no one is suggesting that they're going to get rid of yield curve control, I don't think they will. The big question is how long can you keep rates negative when core inflation is at 4.1%? They've got to start seeding the ground at some point for a slight modification of monetary policy towards a slightly tighter stance. I really don't see how they can not do that. So um, that's probably going to be the big meeting this week. 140 is the bit of a level on dollar yen. We struggle to move back above that. We're consolidating at the moment between 138.30 and 140.95, which was the highs earlier uh, earlier this month. 
or the end of last month rather. So we're in a bit of a choppy range at the moment. Be interesting to see which way we break in the aftermath of this week's decision. Also this week we have got Chinese retail sales. Um, that'll be interesting in the context of how um, the Chinese consumer is bouncing back or is not bouncing back depending on your point of view. We did see a big rebound in April retail sales of 18.4%, which was also the biggest year on year gain since March 2021, but they still came in below forecast and they also needed to be set in the context of the fact that in April last year, the Chinese economy was subject to various restrictions and what have you, COVID restrictions. So you would expect to see a big, big rebound in April. Why would you not? Because you're coming off a very low comparison, a baseline. So um, for, th for this week's May April retail, uh, this week's May retail sales, get my words out. Um, we're expecting to see um, a fairly decent rebound again. Um, got to bear in mind the comparative 13.9% on retail sales and industrial production is expected to come in around about 3.8%, which is going to be slightly below the levels that we saw in April of around about 53 So keep an eye on Chinese retail sales for any evidence of um, a return of Chinese consumer confidence. On the corporate front, we haven't really got that much this week. I think the most notable um, item on the menu is Tesco's first quarter results, um, which are due, which are due on the 16th of June. Come off the highs that we saw earlier this year, um, back in April when Tesco reported its full year numbers, hit a 12 month high. Total revenue rose 7.2%, coming in at 65 billion, 65.7 billion pounds. Obviously, that was as a large result of the fact that consumers having to pay more for everyday products. It is notable, though, that the rise in revenue, 7.2, is much lower than the current rate of inflation at the time, which is 10.4, and the even higher, five, higher, higher food price levels of 17%. So we can see there that for all the accusations of price gouging by retailers, supermarkets, and what have you, they're clearly they're, they're clearly taking a hit to their margins. And certainly if you look at their operating profits, they fell by 50%. So, you know, there is, they've got higher costs, they're cutting their margins, the higher costs are in the form of higher energy costs, but also they're paying the staff more money to try and retain them um, from the likes of Aldi, Little, Sainsbury's, you know, the, the competition is fairly intense. Um, and they've also announced a, a raft of fresh price cuts for various staple products. Um, so um, in 2024, Tesco said it's optimistic to be able to deliver the same level of adjusted operating profit as the year just gone. Obviously, keep an eye on margins, keep an eye on market share, um, but not expecting a particularly disappointing set of numbers given the fact that Tesco's is the UK's number one retailer. And if we look at this trend line here, we've probably got a nice trend unfolding with respect to this particular one here. Maybe we've broken it, but we've also got to bear in mind that this level here around about 260p also acted as a little bit of a resistance area here and a resistance area here. So we may find that there is a little bit of support there, but ultimately, if we drift back below towards, if we drift, if we go below that, we could well find a decent area of support around about 245 and the 200 day moving average. So that's it, I think, for this week. As I say, three key rate decisions this week from the Federal Reserve, the ECB, and the Bank of Japan. We've got US CPI, we've got UK wages and unemployment, um, which could give us a decent um, heads up when it comes to what the Bank of England is likely to do um, Thursday week when they meet on the 20, I think it's the 23rd, what's the ECB? It's the 15th, so yeah, it'll be the 22nd 
22nd of June, the Bank of England is due to meet. So I'll be interested to see how that plays out. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets. <laughs>